But who do you make the records for, Stephen, when you make records? Is it for you, for the artist, or a combination of the two? You think um, I'm always aware of the fact that I'm actually working for the artist. They're not working for me. They're employing me, basically. So um, I, you know, I, I, I try and make a record that I know that they will be happy with, and, and, and myself, hopefully, too. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to be... Um, kind of be that, that dis dismissive of my own thoughts. I mean, um, but, um, and obviously I do want to please um, the record company. I want them to be happy with it so they're happy to put the record out. But I don't like um, ben bending over backwards for them. I mean, I often find it very weird that uh, the reason why an artist gets signed in the first place is because there's something artistically original or something about them that makes them stand out. Cool. So the A&R man thinks we'll sign this. And then as soon as they're signed, there's this kind of thing to try and make them conform to what's being played on the radio at the moment, you know. And I think that can really stifle things. And I think sometimes when you're just left to your own devices, you come up with something that is exciting and original. I mean, a case in point, you know, um, I, I, I was working uh, um, uh, about 2005 it was, and I went to see a band I was working with called The Ordinary Boys. And this band that had been on before them was a band called the Kaiser Chiefs and they were a support band and I missed their slot and um, I was talking backstage uh, later on with this singer of the, the Ordinary Boys and this guy came up to me and shoved a CD in my hand and this was Nick the drummer from the Kaiser Chiefs and said you know we really would like to work with you have a listen to this please and I listened to the CD and it was interesting and I, I liked it and then uh, Mark Lewis, who was the head of the record label that so the, the Ordinary Boys were signed to, kind of phoned me and said, we're thinking of signing the Kaiser Chiefs. Would you mind doing a test session with them? Just, you know, just to see what it's like in the studio. So I took them into Olympic, into the bunker, the small room. So this is literally like the drums took up all the recording area. I had the rest of the guys playing in the control room, plugged in DI and, you know, just a handheld 57. And we recorded a test session. And that was I Predict a Riot. But because we were given no direction from anyone, we just did our mm. own thing and did what we wanted. It lent, it, you know, and, and that released, up being, the yeah, and that was released. it, the version that was released, yeah. Mm. Mm. And that was not trying to conform to making a hit record, that was just being left you know, to our own devices. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and leaving to your own devices, you, you, you're not a producer who has a, wants to have a signature sound, per se. You, know, you, you describe yourself as being, mm. with the greatest respect, invisible in a way. Like, like mm. a good sound system, you mm. should really know it's there. You're just allowing them to be, uh, to be themselves. Um, so where is the balance between, as I would say, the stronger the artist, the more the producer can do that. But the weaker the artist, the more the producer has to step in and, and, and be the driving for creative force. Yeah. Is, is that a formula that you recognise? Yeah, I mean, if it, ain't, if it ain't broken, don't try and fix it. But even the greatest artists do make mistakes when they're making a record, and it's up to you as a producer to say, hold on a minute, I don't think that's the right way to do this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and then some, you know, people that perhaps haven't got the greatest musicality, just got a way of doing things in a kooky way, can end up being really exciting to listen, you know, and, and you know, very, very fascinating to listen to. So it's a more a case, it really is truly step in when needed, and when you're not needed, just let it flow. And then just be a good, it's like being a great film director, isn't it? You know, you can see four or five different takes of an actor doing his thing in front of camera. And ultimately, it's up to you and working in, obviously, with the editor to decide which one is the one you use in, mm. in the context of the mm. whole film. Yeah. And that's really what I think record production is like. It's like being a film director. You're just particularly choosing to your taste what is the performance that's going to be actually on the record or the film at the end. Yeah. And hopefully, it's to everyone else's taste out there. And maybe leave the odd mistake in there. Yeah, because well, that's where the magic happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah.